Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys, as well as you ladies, for joining Joe Boo's NERB Central here. And we have some breaking news, of course. Um, we got the preliminary video and stuff out, but we've got the details on Dak Prescott, as well as Zach Martin restructuring their, their deal. We've got the actual breakdowns of how it works and possibilities of what the Cowboys may be thinking or possibly doing as well as Philly 500 just can't seem to get me out off of his mind. Just can't seem to get me off his mind. They got problems with their, their team. They got Devarius De Slay, who is a $26 million cap hit that they basically said, why don't you go see if you can find a deal out there so that way we can trade you and, and get some cap relief because you're too expensive. Big play made on Slay. They're looking for cap relief. But before we get into that, let's go through and see exactly what the Dallas Cowboys have done to create space. Now, it was always interesting to me because years ago, when Tony Romo would restructure his contract, a lot of people didn't understand what it meant because they would go, Romo, he's such a team guy. He gave money back to the team, man. See, that's the kind of leader we need. And it's like, let, let me pump the brakes on that just a little bit here because it's not giving money back it's not they didn't give a refund to the cowboys to say spend the money elsewhere what they do is when the cowboys do their contracts they put triggers in there that allow you to move money around basically for cap purposes it's just to make the number look differently for example Last year's cap number was restructured as well. It was $19 million. They kicked a lot of the money to what would have been this year's hit. And see, that's where people say, how are you talking about paying Dak Prescott $49 million this year? He's overpaid. It's like, dudes, this is just accounting purposes. The contract averages $40 million a year. That means some years you may be paying more. Other years you're going to be paying less. And understanding that the first year of that deal was a $17 million cap hit, the second year was a $19 million cap hit, and this year is twenty six. To put that in perspective, I want you to understand that last year the commander's the commanders with the left hand up paid $29 million on the cap for Carson Wentz. Yeah, Carson Wentz. So what the Cowboys did, uh, actually, let, let's start with, since I have that one loaded up first, Zach Martin. Zach Martin was due for a, uh, I want to say, $19 million cap hit. So what they did was they took some of his salary from this year, basically um, $10 million, we'll say roughly. They take that, and they ended up putting some of that into the voidable year, and they end up spreading it out, the hit, out over the other years. So they got $7.8 million from Zach Martin, just like that. Now, it doesn't actually change the amount of money that Zach Martin makes off the contract. It just kicks some of that down the road. It's kind of like a payday loan, okay? Okay. You go through, you get yourself some extra cash and stuff, and you know you're going to have to pay back at some point, or they're going to come get your car. Well, in some cases, if you end up having the player not there long enough, you end up having dead money, and that's where you take care of it. But for now, you have $7.8 million, which is great. So if we also then look at Dak Prescott, we ended up having him as a $49 million cap hit. OK, what they ended up doing was they ended up taking a big chunk of that money and using the voidable year. You see down here, it says voidable year 2025. They kicked that twenty nine million dollars right there, right there into 2025. And that reduced his cap number down to twenty six point seven. So just like that, this wasn't a extension this wasn't a rework of the deal. They had these voidable years there that they could be able to do this. And by the time you get to 2025, if you decide that we're going to try and move on from Dak Prescott, then you end up basically saying, okay, we'll take the hit now. But in 2025, the cap number will be that much higher. Now, here's the thing. 2024. His cap number is $59 million. And I know, look at people saying, oh, man, see, look at that garbage-ass quarterback, overpaid. Well, dudes, as far as the cap goes, 
basically you've averaged about $20.5 million a year for Dak the last three seasons. Actually pretty good as far as cap numbers go. I, I'm, I'm curious to see if any of the talking heads that say when you pay a quarterback money, let's be clear here. Let's be clear here. The numbers that you're actually paying Dak Prescott on the cap are very inconsequential. 10%. It's exactly what the cap hit is this year, 10%. You want to stay below 15% of your cap number going to your quarterback. But in 2024, they can restructure and kick that to the last year of that and basically have the same type of a number. You follow me? You follow me? Okay. All right. Or get a new deal done, in which case the numbers will be even higher. Uh, One other point on this, I will say, is the Cowboys not doing that deal, not doing an extension right now, I think is actually a mistake because of the war that's currently going on with the uh, guaranteed contracts. The longer the Cowboys wait to get a new deal done with Dak, if you start talking about, you know, all the other young guns that are out there, they're going to be paid. You know, when Lamar Jackson finally gets his deal, when you have the Justin Herberts get his deal and so on, when you have um, Cincinnati's quarterback get their deal, then you're going to be looking at the ceiling being raised up in there. Now the question is, are the Cowboys done restructuring deals? I don't know. And will the Cowboys look at doing like they did last year, keeping their own guys and now making a deal, trying to hold on to um, Dalton Schultz? We already know that they made an offer to him. They said was a good offer. Now, I guess it depends on who is gauging it being a good offer. You know, Stephen Jones would say, I offered $2 million, and that's a good offer. But in the grand scheme of things, it may not actually be that good of an offer. The thing that I want to go ahead and – find that that finds interesting and i want to point out is when you sign free agents okay big name free agents it's typically about a two-year rental and i want to go to philly 500 who can't seem to get me off his mind we got to talk about this all right so first i got to get my senses together what good luck get your senses together we can't, we can't do nothing. We can't think straight if we don't have our baby. There we go. Now we're ready to go. Now we're ready to talk. So, as many of you guys have probably seen by now, because I know my, <laughs> my texts are blowing up. My, my DMs are blowing up. I'm getting phone calls. I'm getting the wife call me. I'm getting cousins, people I haven't talked to in years, call me saying, did you hear the rumor? What rumor is that? It's this. Diana Rossini, I like that name, says the Philadelphia Eagles have allowed Darius Slade's agent, Drew Rosenhaus, to seek a trade trade per source. The Eagles are still hopeful to find a solution where Slade remains an Eagle. Okay, now, th- this is something we, ta- we talked about this yesterday. The Eagles have to restructure Darius Slay's contract. I don't see how they have a choice. Uh, there's two real guys, and, and I, you know, that that you can um, really restructure and get big money, and that was Darius Slay and Lane Johnson. And the Eagles are probably going to have to do both. Okay, that was just the reality of the situation. Uh, this morning, the Eagles reworked. Jake Elliott's contract, another guy we talked about at the end of the video yesterday, mm-hmm. ML Football said this, the Pound Eagles are reworked J- kicker Jake Elliott's deal creating $2.49 million. million in cap space per source. Mm-hmm. That takes the Eagles to about, I believe, about $8 million, okay? But he- here's here's the thing. If... The Eagles can't rework Darius Slay's contract. The only option may be for him to go gauge his value on the open market and see what he could get with another team. And then the Eagles, the way the contract would be structured, would then trade him. They can't just trade him under his current contract 
and what he has right now. So either way, I think they're going to have to restructure it something, right? But but here, here's, let's say the Eagles decide they're going to trade Slay. Slay's refusing to rework his contract, right? Okay, You're I'm, I'm, I'm going to end, end right here with that. Here's the problem for um, Slay. Oh, I thought I had his cap numbers here. That's Dak Prescott's. Okay, sorry. But the problem for them is that the various Slay's contract right now. Oh, here it is. Okay. The various Slay's contract, his market value, they say is actually, according to uh, Sports Track, is about $21 million. But you can see what they did here. The first year, he was only a $4.3 million cap hit. The second year, 6.6. Third year, 9.7 so last year 9.7 doable but they kicked so much of that money because they've restructured you see where they restructured here um in 21 22 and um for 23 you see how much is there now his cap number is 26 million dollars and so if they cut him it's 21 million in debt so yeah they're looking and hoping that somebody will trade for them to take that contract so that way they don't get all that dead money and they need that money to help with their cap situation now for us here is the updated it's actually just got updated on over the cap thanks goodness what we have right now in our cap number is 14.7 million dollars we are now over the cap i mean excuse me we have that much we have almost 15 million dollars left over right now and that's because dak prescott's number has gone down to 27 million uh 27.1 cap hit the next one you look at which is a huge one still is demarcus lawrence's at 26 that's a pretty damn big cap number but i'm not sure that they want to restructure that one again because you know again that means you're gonna have to hold on to them for a few more years Tyron Smith. Now, again, they've been talking to Tyron Smith about redoing his deal. Again, his contract um, has a voidable year that's still left on it next year. They could kick half of that money there and grab another $8 million and be up to about 20, uh, 23, $24 million. Zeke Elliott, if they cut him now, they could get $5 million. Um, if they make him a post two first, which is basically spreading it out over two years, they could end up getting uh, $11 million for this year if they wanted to. They could restructure Michael Gallup if they wanted to to get some there. Zach Martin, we already know, he's down to $11 million. Tony Pollard, you can't do anything with that except get him a long-term deal. A long-term deal, you could end up, you know, a couple million dollars for the first year and kick the money down the road if you deemed him a guy who could be on the team for multiple years. Um, Dorrance Armstrong, you're not going to do anything with that. J. Ron Kirst, you're not going to do anything. With I think that they could cut Jordan Lewis. Jordan Lewis, you could save almost $5 million. Um, and since Jordan Lewis was injured most of last year, and they had guys step up, that may be a cap casually. So more than likely, the Cowboys aren't done with the restructuring and or releasing, and will get more money. The question will just be is, what will they do with it? And we'll be following along, of course, to see what else. There will be a lot of news over the next couple of days because come Tuesday, that is when you can actually start signing people. And right now, the Cowboys actually have some cash for once going into it. And they'll probably work on some of their own players to get those deals done to keep them from hitting free agency. And who knows? Maybe we'll actually go out and get some big name ones. I'm Mark Holmes, and I hope you join us tonight with all of the latest going on with the Dallas Cowboys at 9 p.m. Eastern. Peace.